Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I'll show you a little bit of production of the Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probe, the ITTP. I'm making the stylus tips and the spark eroder. And while that's running, I'm doing odd jobs in the workshop. I found a way to improve these low cost dial indicator stands to make them a lot more uh, slinky to operate, a lot more smooth in the uh, adjustment with a little uh, knurled with a little knurled wheel with a ball bearing pressed in the end. Um, I'll take you through that because I know a lot of you will have these cheap uh, Noga knockoff stands and they're very difficult to set but this improvement makes them uh, a much easier to use more refined dial indicator stand. With these cheap Chinese copies of the dial indicator stands they work really well and um, they seem to grip up pretty tight and that's the important thing but one of the problems I don't like about them is they've got these little wee small adjusting dials for zeroing in. If you've got the type that has the adjustment block in it, this little block here, um, it has a very small adjusting dial and it's very difficult to set it on zero. I think you can see me there, I'll try and set it on zero. And the difficulty is, get it set there, but it's such a small dial, see I'm a hundredth off, try again, hundredth off again. If I overcompensate, I can sometimes get it, but it's pretty difficult to set it right. Two hundredths off, and so on. Um, so I think it's really worth spending a small amount of time and just improving on that design. So what it is is a very small little four millimeter knurled headed screw. And if you make one up with a much bigger diameter, uh, where am I? Using a piece of four millimeter screw, but with a much bigger diameter wheel and putting a little two millimeter or better still in the US, you could probably easily get a 332nd, which is a 2.4 approximately, bearing ball and just pushing it in the end and a little bit of grease on there oh that was a bit of a slip uh, just to smooth up the thread a bit and now we've got a much easier adjustment I hope so now if we want to make that adjustment it's a lot more controlled. You've got a much, much bigger diameter, so it's a lot more sensitive. And the, the ball bearing, the bearing ball, gives it a much smoother feel. See there, spot on. Um, so just by changing from this little dial to that bigger dial and putting a bearing ball in it, which is really only an hour's work, it just makes the rest of your days using your dial indicator so much more controllable and enjoyable. Ah, oh, there goes the spark eroder. Hold on. Speaking of tiny steel balls, I'm running um, the Hallmark ITTP stylus tips styli tips as tiny little four millimeter hard steel balls and um, I put a spark road uh, about a 2.2 diameter hole about three millimeters deep and that gives it a really strong mechanical connection to the stylus and it's really important that you have a good connection there um, because it's an impact tolerant uh, probe and it needs to be that not just by name only but it needs to be able to stand prang ups and crashes and you know I've never had one come off um, because they're so well connected um, the stylus stem is a piece of high grade alloy steel heat treated alloy steel cylindrically ground down to that 2.2 diameter and that fits into these little balls 
and is Loctite to them with a high grade of Loctite and you just can't get it off once they're assembled. So they're spark corroded with a electrode, first of all with a roughing electrode and then with a finishing electrode and it's quite a process. Um, it's all about flushing spark corroding. Here's a finishing electrode here. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's two tiny little holes in the end. There, ah, you can, oh, you can just see it now, two tiny little holes. And those holes are just big enough to suck the particles of eroded steel through, but, but not big enough uh, to cause other problems with spikes of metal going up inside it. And if the hole's any bigger, it's a problem, and any smaller, it's a problem. And it has to be just the right amount of suction to suck the particles out. And then it runs smoothly and automatically, and I can go away and do something else. So it's all about automation. So I do a, a batch of 10 per cycle of these, and uh, they're all exactly in contact with each other. I use a gauge to set them in the same line of contact and so that the pitch is exactly the same and they're all at the same depth. And a little piece of aluminium on the side that crushes slightly to give them all a grip. There's a, where are we? There's a used piece of aluminium there and you can just see the little dents where it holds the balls firmly. And I've got the pitch here for each ball for my digital readout so that I can index over and spark corrode each ball. So it's quite a process doing this, uh, but it's way better than just uh, using a high grade adhesive to hold the stem onto the ball. It's mechanically connected and it makes it bulletproof. So while I use suction during the eroding, I use pressure flushing to clean it out after each hole. And then revert to suction to do the eroding. Here you can see the eroding process with this dial indicator. quite rapid if you get all of the different parameters set right. If you don't get it set right, it takes forever. I tried drilling these steel balls with tungsten carbide and um, cubic boron nitride and um, well you, you know, the progress was very slow. I did manage to drill one steel ball uh, but by the end of that the drill was getting blunt and these are very hard high quality steel balls and by the end of one hole the drill was getting blunt and um, I, I, I realized that it's, it's quicker to spark erode it but you know if you just need to make one then um, it could be a good option I suppose these look like tiny little parts if you're not used to this type of work but after a while they become quite big. You know, I've been working with the 1.1 uh, diameter copper. Can you see that? For the steel cores. And I have to machine that and put little flats on it and deburr it. Um, and that goes inside the 2.2 diameter electrodes. Um, by the time you've been working on those little inserts for a few hours, these four millimeter balls seem quite big. It's interesting isn't it how it's all a matter of degree. So we're starting to get there now. If you're interested in the process of spark eroding or EDM um, I've done a couple of videos two or three years ago if you have a look back through my videos on the Thread Express YouTube channel this YouTube channel. Um, it could be a good option for you. You can buy them secondhand quite cheaply. Um, it suits a certain type of work only, of course.
All right, so drill about six mil deep for the tapping size, which is 3.2. So now we're going to put in a four millimeter tap and we're going to start off doing it in the machine so that we get it concentric. Uh, we've got the tailstock unlocked and we're just going to do a few turns. That's enough to get it running true. Now don't bump the camera over. So now I'd rather do this by hand because uh, too easy to break the tap. So we're just going to drive it down now till it bottoms. There goes the sparker rover. But I'll just finish this. So we can bottom the uh, little stud there without it, so that it. So we can bottom the little stud there and uh, have it held in by the friction of the end. Now we'll put in the chamfering tool. We've got these double sided chamfering tools. One end is an internal chamfer and the other end is a diameter chamfer. So if I use the diameter chamfer, It'll do all the chamfering I need. A bit distracting I've got the camera rather precariously balanced and uh, if you see the whole world tipping up on you you know what's gone wrong so now we're going to part it off thumb wheel just need to face the back of it and clean it up a wee bit there we are we just got a four millimeter cap screw using a fairly long one so when I saw it off I'll still have a useful piece put that in the vise aluminium jaws Tighten it up pretty tight because we're going to bottom it in there eventually anyway. Have a look at the length we need. About 10 millimetres plus a bit for facing. Let's say 12 millimetres which is about there. Sometimes a hacksaw is still the tool of choice. There we are. So now I'll just uh, put the little ball in the end. I keep aluminium jaws in my vice all the time. More often than not it's an advantage. So I can grip it on the thread, pull it out without damaging steel parts. Now to put the little bearing ball in the end of your screw, I had a video of this, machining it in the lathe and pressing it in, 
But I can't find it. I must have deleted it. Anyway, I won't make another one. Look, all you need to do is find a little bearing ball. You know, if you've got a 4mm screw, that's probably got a, a thread root diameter of about 3mm because it's rolled and there's a bit of clearance there. So you need to get a ball that's smaller than that. You know, a 2.5 would be ideal or a 332nd. But I didn't have those. I've only got 2mm, 3mm or 1/8, -mm. And 3mm is a bit big. So I've had to use 2mm. So if you, so I drilled a 1.9 hole, a, a bit more than half the diameter deep, and so that's an interference fit, and just tapped it in. It just swells the end of the screw slightly, but it's still a, a, a good free fit inside the thread. And so if you've got a, a 332nd ball in the US, just drill a hole slightly smaller and tap it in or press it in with the vise until you get that effect a nice smooth slippery pressure point from your thumb screw. So the larger diameter dial gives you a much bigger circumference and so a lot more reduction so it's much more sensitive and gives a very small amount of movement whereas the small diameter dial has a very coarse amount of movement and uh, is uh, much more rapid and difficult to control and also the uh, friction point of the bearing ball on the large on this new one is much silkier and smoother compared with the little machined pip on this one on the cheap one that sort of judders and staggers around um, so two reasons why this gives you a lot more control thanks for watching guys and uh, see you next time cheers